this is where it started. The pick four, Collingwood have matched the Gold Coast Suns bid for Nicholas Dacos from the Oakley Chargers. And this is how it's going. Number 35, Nick Dacos. Thank you. You should be very proud. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But what you might not be aware of is the levels of sacrifice and adversity that Nick Dacos has had to overcome during his ascendancy to the pinnacle of the AFL world. From family heartbreak all the way to his knee being smashed to smithereens just weeks away from the 2023 final series. On the 3rd of January 2003, a certain Nick Dacos was essentially born into footy folklore by way of AFL Hall of Famer Peter Dacos and his lovely wife Colleen. As we know it, Peter Dacos may be better known as the magician or the Macedonian marvel. He is considered to be one of the goats in all of Collingwood's 132 years of history. He has played 250 plus games for the club, earned a premiership, three All-Australians and a goal of the year to certify his incredible goal sneak ability, particularly by the pockets of Victoria Park. What we didn't know is that Dacos' name would continue to live on as they bestow Nick Dacos and Josh Dacos to the modern AFL world. Nick Dacos' affinity with the football was recognised very early in his life by those around him. However, Nick had his doubts about his ability, like most young budding athletes would during their upwards trajectory. Leading into his stint at the Oakley Chargers, Nick would ask himself if he could do what everyone was asking of him. Is he too slow? Unfit? Well, these anxieties at TAC level and school footy were further compounded by the endless lockdowns that seemed like they had no end in sight, which were imposed on by the Australian government. Curfew across metropolitan Melbourne from 8pm this evening, and it will run from 8pm to 5am each and every day. And the only reason to be out of your home between the hours of 8pm and 5am is to get care, to give care, uh, or to go to and from work or be at work. We can no longer have people uh, visiting others, we can no longer have people simply out and about. Despite all these natural anxious tendencies that are inherent within the sports world, Nick Dacos went out in his first game for the Chargers, getting three touches in the first minute of the game and later finishing up with 28 disposals and three goals, washing away any doubts that Nick was battling internally. He doubled down the next week and collected 30 and another three goals. The general AFL world was starting to see Nick's aptitude with a footy, oozing with class. A low centre of gravity, able to kick on both sides of the body, a work rate that could run any tag into the ground, and a proclivity to be a leader well beyond what his age could ever possibly suggest. In what ended up being an amazing 2021 draft year for Nick Dacos in school footy and tack cup. On the other hand, it was a total capitulation for Collingwood at AFL level, as they fell from the graces of being a lock for some sort of finals run between the years of 2018, 2019 and 2020. The Pies only managed to win six games, finishing up in 17th position in what was ultimately Nathan Buckley's final season as head coach for the Collingwood Football Club. It's a monster victory that's been indefensible from Collingwood today. You just can't sugarcoat this at all. Collingwood is in free fall. And you wonder how far to go to find rock bottom. 2021 was a year where the team lacked the pillar to lean on when it came to the game plan. We looked slow, uninspired, a lack of pressure, and we were poor in any scoring realm. Yeah, we all look low here. We lacked a bit of zip today, there's no doubt. And we were poor in any scoring realm. We couldn't score from stoppages, turnovers, or defensive half transitions, ranking well below AFL average for all those categories. To make matters worse, the Pies were plagued with injuries to Darcy Moore, Jeremy Howe, Pendlebury and Elliott throughout the course of the year. Brody Grundy, Pendlebury, Sidebottom and Taylor Adams were all top performers in the middle of the field that year for the club, but it seemed like they were needing an injection of ready-made talent that would essentially allow Collingwood to rebound from a disappointing year and avoid a rebuild entirely. Similarly to how the Pies were bottom four in 2017 and subsequently made the grand final in 2018. Touched on the way through to Goey, still to Goey, still with to Goey, still with to Goey. Oh yes, yes, you knew he could do it. Nick 
Dacos fits the missing ingredient that the Pies desperately needed going into 2022. Nick Dacos ended his 2021 season averaging 35.8 disposals, two goals in the five TSC Cup games he played. These draft year stats closely mirrored that of Sam Walsh from the Blues a couple years prior. The icing on the cake was his dominant game for Vic Metro, where he collected 41 disposals and kicked two goals against their crosstown rivals, Vic Country. Nick's draft profile suggested he emulated the game of Lockie Whitfield, and while we can somewhat agree that there is a similarity there between them, it would be incredibly naive to assume that they're in a similar echelon in 2024. Top D's footy IQ, he knows where the ball's going. He he's always seems ahead of the game. Look at that, cuts that off mm. and then finishes. It's almost like Shifter, he was bored with the game at the <laughs> under 18 level <laughs> at Patches over the last 12 to 18 months. He's In order to acquire the highly touted Nick Dacos, Collingwood were able to snare picks 22, 46, 58, 79, and a future fourth rounder from the Suns. And in exchange, we gave them a future second, third, and fourth round pick. With these 2021 draft draft picks acquired, the Pies had 3,000 draft points to secure Nick, which would mean even if he went at pick one, with the 20% discount thanks to the father-son selection at pick one, Nick would have costed 2,400 points, which is more than enough, and suggests Collingwood competently prepared for all cases in the lead up to this monumental draft. On November 23, Nick Dacos was selected at pick four, matching Gold Coast Suns bid. Pick four, Collingwood have matched the Gold Coast Suns bid for Nicholas Dacos from the Oakley Chargers. Would all Collingwood supporters want to know, and players, are you going to play for Collingwood? Yeah. All the anticipation and hope for Nick Dacos and the Collingwood Football Club was starting to finally reach an apex going into the 2022 season. Collingwood Football Club seemingly and publicly went into a complete reform from committee, coaching panel and club culture. All these changes were very clear and has been a concerted emphasis since then. It started with Fly McRae being appointed as a coach in September 2021, quickly followed by the acquisition of Nick Dacos, and of course, how can we forget the resignation of Eddie McGuire in early 2021, which would have surely been somewhat of a catalyst for all the changes that we have seen transpire at the Collingwood Football Club. Fly McRae instilled a positive, encouraging, contemporary culture that he had somewhat adopted from the pioneering Damien Hardwick from Richmond adding his own quirks into the principles of a positive working environment. As I mentioned, it was clear to see an omnipresent in the body language of players and coaches across each game week. Ultimately, this was just as important to the revivification of Collingwood Football Club as it was drafting Nick Dacos and investing in him so heavily. And now we have arrived at round one, 2021. Nick Dacos is set to debut against St Kilda and in the very first quarter within the first few minutes of the game, he had started off slow with a costly error deep in the back line, which resulted in a direct turnover and goal and a subsequent scuffle between the two teams. Does it get over the line? No. King again. Imagine, here's Dacos on debut and he pops it up. There's that quick surge under pressure. Smart positioning by St Kilda players, but afterwards, a little bit of a scuffle there. Taylor Adams going in there to look at. Everyone from Collingwood stood up for him, and it's probably one of those moments that helped Nick to not deter away for what he has been entrusted to do in the team, which is to swiftly move the ball from the back line and trigger a slingshot into forward 50. Come the final siren, Nick Dacos was able to collect 27 disposals and 7 intercept possessions as Collingwood win. In the game, he displayed moments of great tackling pressure, composure with the ball, and what we probably didn't see coming was the inception of a highly touted draft pick supplying their trade as a half-back flanker. Rather than being thrown into the lion's den in the middle, or much more commonly, and probably worse, in a forward pocket where we have seen previous prosperous draft picks wither away in confidence hiding in the forward line. Whisper kicked his first goal for Collingwood against Geelong, along with 26 disposals and 9 contested possessions. Famous name, famous number, famous club. He gets his first. Earning close to 10 contested possessions in one of your first few games in AFL go a long way in proving that Nick Dacos was not just an outside player. In round four, what was seen to be Nick's real first announcement to the league that he had arrived. Nick took three Brownlow votes in a performance that comprised of 32 disposals, 10 score involvements. Unfortunately, his stellar performance was soured by an unbelievable goal-kicking performance spearheaded by Josh Kennedy, Liam Ryan, 
Willy Rioli and Jack Darling. They all kicked 10 goals between each other and zero behinds. The Eagles went on to only kick three behinds for the game compared to a wasteful Collingwood kicking 14 behinds. However, Collingwood fans were not ready for the run that Collingwood were about to go on with many thanks to Nick Dacos, of course. From round 12 onwards, Nick would embark on one of the greatest streaks of games put together in a rookie season. Nick collected 36 disposal against Hawthorne in a four point win where we were able to hold off a resurgent Hawks, nearly bouncing back from a 23 point deficit at half time. In round 13, a massive Queen's birthday meeting with the D's. Nick Dacos collected another 33 disposals, 10 contested possessions, and Pies win in a runaway fourth quarter performance, kicking six goals to one. At this point, round 16, Pies are on a six game win streak and Collingwood fans are beginning to wonder at this point. How far can Nick Dacos and Collingwood really go this season? I mean, we did finish 17th in 2021. Surely we're just making up the numbers, right? Well, in arguably one of the most gutsiest away wins for the regular season against the Gold Coast Suns, Nick Dacos collected 37 disposals, which isn't even his season high, mind you. Two goal assists and the famous moment that involved both Josh and Nick linking up to kick a much needed goal that would catapult the Pies into three unanswered goals to come from well behind in the fourth quarter. Neutral, Nick Dacos, good vision, the brother. Didn't need to call for it, it was already coming in his direction. Josh Dacos loops for three, has three, we're back to a goal. Nick would later on collect his second lot of three Brownlow votes for his trouble in the game against the Suns, his first lot being against Hawthorne. In what will go down as one of the best games in a debut season, Nick Dacos carried the Pies to another close win against Adelaide, defeating them by five points, which was probably the craziest thing next to Nick's debut season. The fact that the Pies won 11 games by 12 points or less in the season. Nick accumulated 40 disposals and kicked three crucial goals to ensure the Pies would take this win to the bank, adding to what was an eight win streak at the time. As Nathan Buckley said, Pendlebury said, let's go use the corridor. A little give and go, not for the first time. The veteran and the rookie combine again for a second goal to Nick Dacos. And then Cameron from a standing start. Cox couldn't quite. And he wins a free kick and it's advantage to the Pies. And Collingwood continue to stand up and soak up whatever the Crows... As we fast forward to round 21, we see a mouth-watering top four clash between the Demons and the Pies. Anticipation was at an all-time high thanks to the gnarly comment from Ed Langdon during the week. personality in AFL but you just had to know that Brazzy was coming at the neck in the first chance that he gets and it just so happened to occur in the first minute of the game. The precedent was set and inspired by Brazzy. Nick accrued 31 disposals and another 10 contested possessions which only further suggested he can also bark and bite. Pies' colours were finally lowered by a much more competitive Sydney Swans at the SCG, losing by 5 goals and losing the contested possession count by minus 30. However, Nick was valiant, fighting off a tag and still managed to collect 20 disposals, a season high 11 contested possessions and a goal. This would see Collingwood's crazy run end in the regular season and look to bounce back very quickly against the Carlton in what was one of the craziest games of the year, knocking out Carlton from the top eight and subsequently allowing Collingwood to finish within the top four. So come season's end, the Pies became finals hardened after losing to the grand finalist, Sydney and Geelong, a grand total of four times throughout the home and away and final series. These losses attributed to 50% of our losses in 2021. Four losses of eight coming up against Geelong and Sydney. Not only did the club take strong encouragement from the final series that was, it got valuable time into Nick's experience within a finals environment. Without being a top five performer in the final series for the Pies, Nick still managed to average close to 25 disposals for the duration of the final series. This would only further exacerbate Nick Dacos's desire to take Collingwood back to the promised land. Most people would feel heartbroken after, heartbroken after that, Craig. How do you feel? Yeah, there's this. Yeah, it's difficult. 
you know, it's difficult because you get so close. Um, there's just an overwhelming sense of pride, though. There's this, you know, just catch yourself your emotions because you look at the players in the eyes and see how much they've hurt and how much they've given for the year to, to fall short. Um, yeah, just extremely proud of what they've been able to do this year, the group. After being elected as the Round 3 Rising Star, Nick finished the season averaging 26 disposals, running at 75% disposal efficiency. And you all would have guessed it, Nick Dacos was the eventual rising star for 2022. Nick won, polling 60 votes, ahead of Sam DeConing from Geelong, who collected 48. For those wondering how the rising star award is tallied out, there are 12 experts on a panel and they hand out a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 scoring system. Five points being for their best rising star to their fifth best option being awarded one point. Along with the Ron Evans medal, Nick was also rewarded with a $20,000 personal investment folio and a dedicated private banker thanks to NAP. An amazing way to cap off an extraordinary start to Nick's career. Rolling into the 2023 season, Nick Dacos sat down with Nathan Buckley and the outer AFL world would find out that Nick Dacos faced a family heartache before season one of his AFL career. He lost his auntie in a gruelling battle with cancer and in an eerily similar timeline, Nick also lost his grandfather on the eve of the 2023 season. It was clear by the point of round one, 2023, Nick was well accustomed to having to deal with trials and tribulations that transcend far beyond what AFL footy presents. You could make the case that without those obstacles in his life, he wouldn't be where he is today as a person and an athlete. Whisper and Collingwood started the season steamrolling their competition, tasked with no bigger challenge than the reigning premiers Geelong in the first round. A high scoring affair that saw Nick walk away 35 disposals, the very first two of his Brownlow votes for 2023, and a bunch of confidence to take from beating the reigning premiers very convincingly in the end. In round two, the synergy between Nick Dacos and Pendlebury or otherwise known as the Master and the Apprentice, seemed to have left off from where it started very early in the previous season. Whisper and Pendles linked up for the goal of the day with a chain of handballs that led to a goal from 50 metres out with Nick Dacos celebrating with his right hand up as soon as the ball leaves the boot, which is becoming a recognisable trademark celebration of his. This was a big game for Nick Dacos and Collingwood. It was a statement that suggested the Pies are back and it wasn't a one season wonder. The boys were hungrier than ever, and what we've come to learn by watching Nick early in his career is he is willing to take the game on and take responsibility for the big moments. The Pies end up beating Port by 70 points in a game that Collingwood won the contested possession count by 50 plus. That was certainly one way to send shockwaves across the AFL. Of course, it was another stellar performance by Nick, 32 disposals and two goals adding to his budding resume. As we look ahead to the Anzac clash between the Pies and Essendon, Nick Dacos was waltzing his way into the game with an expected 12 Brownlow votes already attached to his name for the season. This would include a career high 42 disposals in the week before against the Saints in the inaugural gather round in Adelaide. The Pies and the Bombers were locking horns for the first half and in the third quarter, the Bombers put it on the Pies, kicking six goals to one. Leading into the fourth quarter, the Bombers were cruising with a 28 point lead. All right, Nick Dacos, time to show us that you were more than just these easy Easy chip kicks around the halfback flank like the critics are suggesting. 25 minutes later, Nick has two goals in a quarter, collects 40 disposals for the game, and Pies win by 13 points, kicking seven goals to zero in the final quarter. And by the way, Nick claims his first Anzac Day medal. It's fair to say he will be contesting to have the most Anzac medals dangling around his neck by the time his career is all said and done. James Hurd and Scott Penderby both currently have three. Anzac Day medal sitting on their neck. A prelim match against the Swans would shortly follow suit. A chance for Nick and the Pies to somewhat balance the sheet for the pain the Swans inflicted on us all in that gut-wrenching finish. All this bullying and child play that the Swans tried to razzle whisper was just a waste of concerted emphasis from them. Pies win by 29 points and say enjoy a year off from the finals, Tom Papley, you cheat. Remember how I said Nick's first three Brownlow votes were dampened by the shock loss against the Eagles at Marvel Stadium in 2022? Well, he somewhat got his vengeance in round 12, 2023 collecting 30 disposals, three goals, and a 63-point win, along with two Brownlow votes for his troubles at Optus Stadium against the West Coast Eagles. And now we're on the eve of a Queen's birthday meeting with the Demons. The Pies are 11-1, but they're coming off the back of two contests that were largely uncompetitive against the Eagles and the Kangaroos. The Ds had lost two of the last three games, putting a dent in their top four hopes. It was reasonable to assume that this wasn't going to be a game that the Pies would come into very lightly. 
The Pies were completely stopped in their tracks when transitioning the ball from the defensive half, a master plan applied by Simon Goodwin, and a bit of Collingwood lacking polish in the distribution. These two factors led to the Pies conceding 34 forward half intercepts for the game, minus 20 in the contested possession count. All of this, and Nick Dacos only had two score involvements for the game. A stat that he had averaged close to seven score involvements per game, which was enough to have him top 20 within that category for 2023. The boys were down and looked tired. A great time for the bye to come along for the soaring Maggies. Returning from the bye, a timely matchup against the Crows who Nick has taken a liking to very early in his career. To the current date, Nick has won all four encounters against the Crows, averaging 32 disposals and one goal. However, the Pies found themselves down by 12 points, once again at three-quarter time. An increasingly concerning position that the Pies would regularly find themselves placed within. But Nick would inevitably change the narrative of the game, collecting 37 disposals, a season-high 15 contested possessions, nine clearances, nine score involvements, and another much-needed goal that came halfway through the fourth quarter. The Pies end up winning by two points and win their 11th out of the 15 games when trailing at three-quarter time. Of course, Nick filled the stat sheets and continued to find ways to have crucial moments late in the game, emanating the clutch gene that was surely passed on by his father, Peter. By the way, another three Brownlow votes, which could go a long way to improve his chances of being a Brownlow medalist in just his second year of AFL footy. This purple patch for Nick would continue to accentuate in what was already one of the most enthralling seasons the league had seen. Nick gathered 36 disposals, 10 tackles, one goal in a 78 point win against the perpetually disappointing Gold Coast Suns. Three Brownlow votes tick, Pies 13 and two, and top of the ladder, tick. Next up in round 17, Nick would test his midfield craft against arguably the cream of the crop within that element. He comes up against the Western Bulldogs that comprise of Tom Liberatore, Marcus Bontepelli, who were the two highest rated players for the competition in 2023. Fortunately for the Collingwood faithful, we were awarded some respite from the regular dose of anxiety and heartache late in games. The Doggies cushioned the scoreboard late in the game, bringing a four goal margin down to two, but Nick's rich vein of form continued, piling up 29 disposals, two goals, 11 clearances, another amazing season high in a game that definitely brought the best out of him in the center and around the stoppages. Round 18 would mark a fourth game in a row where Nick polled three Brownlow votes against the Dockers. Just another lazy 36 disposals and one goal. The Pies have all but sealed up a top two spot, guaranteeing a home final along with the coveted double chance. Cue the moment where every Collingwood's fan's hopes of the Premiership came all but crashing down. Nicholas, a handball procession through the middle and Nick Dacos takes the mark and then felt his bone. I think everyone was unsure about the nature of the injury, including Whisper himself. Was it a cork, a ligament strain? Who knows? Dacos, um, so he had a, a, a real direct impact injury to his knee. Um, there was some bone bruising in there, and then obviously the scan revealed a little bit of a hairline fracture, and it's on the very minor end of that at the moment. We know that fractures are typically that sort of five, six week mark, so at the moment Nick will miss the final three rounds, certainly, and then we've obviously got the bye weekend as well up our sleeve, which gives us a bit more time. Bone healing is different for everyone, so there's no certainty around when I'll return. Um, we're going to do the best to get the swelling down as soon as we can and get moving again. Um, but as to a return date, we're not too sure yet, so it's going to be something we're going to have to play by year. And great. A fracture in the knee, an uncertain timeline, and we are weeks away from embarking on an auspicious final series. In the meanwhile, on the field for the Pies, the Pies would need to recalibrate and play what's in front of them. Finishing the season with the losing record in the final five games, going two wins and three losses. However, the silver linings being the fact the Pies still managed to finish first. So the Pies have a date set with the Melbourne Demons at the G in a qualifying final. With that Nick Dacos and no promise in sight that would indicate Nick could feature in the 2023 final series. The Pies are left tasked with what would be a game with our backs against the walls and an incident between Bruzzy and Angus Brayshaw that still sends shockwaves in the AFL today. Despite getting smacked in most stat categories, inside 50s being 69 to 37, minus five in center clearances, minus 15 in contested possessions, the Pies managed to win the most important stat of them all, the scoreboard winning 60 to 53. McStay and Bobby Hill combined for five of the nine goals the Pies kicked. Jack Crisp, 
missed the finals, collected 23 disposals, 11 contested possessions, and one goal assist that would lead the way in the middle. Darcy Moore was massive during the Demon Siege late in the game, collecting a game high, 11 intercept possessions. We'll play the winner of Carlton Sydney. Perfect situation all Pies fans were holding their breath for. A qualifying final win which would allow an extra 14 odd days for Nick Dacos to make it to the starting line of a preliminary final date with GWS. A fixture that has managed to find its way into a few final series since the inception of GWS just over a decade ago. And now we arrive to the penultimate game of 2023. Collingwood vs GWS at the G. Pies start hot, ending the first quarter with a two goal lead to a goalless GWS. Maybe the Pies fans will be awarded with some respite and win this game in runaway fashion. First blood make pies. Mm, it ended up being quite the contrary, actually. Toby Green, at the start of the third quarter, puts GWS up by three goals. An eerily similar feeling to the preliminary final timeline against GWS in 2019. However, Pies managed to rally and give a massive response, kicking back-to-back -back goals thanks to Bobby Hill and McStay. Daniel McStay in particular for that game was monumental. Pies ended up kicking five goals to two in that third quarter to set up an absolute thriller at the G. Quarter four, a barrage of attacks were deployed by the Orange Tsunami. But between Darcy Cameron, Darcy Moore, Isaac Quainall, and even surprisingly, Scott Pendlebury were able to accrue 15 intercept marks between each other for the game, which is astronomical. In the middle, Nick Dacos and Dugowie took care of business, collecting 19 clearances between the two, which was crucial in asserting dominance around the grounds, particularly around the stoppages. Listen to this noise. Collingwood are into the grand final. And Pies, in very typical fashion, somehow crawled their way into a grand final, thanks to an eventual one-point win against GWS, initially sweetened by the fact that Nick was able to get through an entire game without any knee dramas. Conversely, the result was dampened by the news that Mick Stay would miss the grand final due to an MCL strain to his knee. Let's quickly divert our attention to a little side quest that Nick had embarked on in 2023, a quest to win the 2023 Brownlow medal. Now, of course, the injury against Hawthorne almost all but depleted his hopes to win a Brownlow medal in his second year, but it was close, too close. Nick Dacos in 20 games during the home and away season recorded 28 Brownlow votes and collected 12 of them within the space of a four game period, being best on ground for those four games against the Crows, Suns, Dogs and the Dockers. Unfortunately, it was just short of what was required to make history as a second year player to win a Brownlow. Lockie Neal finished ahead of Nick Dacos by three votes, polling 31 votes to steal it from the clutches of Whisper. Never mind, Nick had a chance to have the final laugh against Lockie Neal in a grand final that had plenty of narratives going into it. One being, of course, Nick Dacos, the would have been Brownlow medalist versus the now two times Brownlow medalist Lockie Neal. The other three narratives were probably the fact that the Lions had become a bit of a bogey team for the Pies over recent years, losing their last six clashes against the Lions leading up to the grand final encounter. The other obvious narrative was the fact the Lions had won the last couple of grand final matches between the two in the early 2000s. And finally, the narrative that the Lions just couldn't win at the G in recent times. Well, the game certainly met the expectations for all parties involved. A high scoring affair with constant ebbs and flows. You score, I score type of game between the Pies and the Lions. Nick Dacos led from the front and like a movie, Nick was destined to kick the first goal of the game. It is. Never in doubt. Nick continued to thrive in his element during the first half, collecting 19 disposals, 18 contested possessions and one goal with the Pies taking a six point lead into half time. Having accumulated six more scoring shots against the Lions, Pies looking the most likely at the big break. I thought about entirely centering this documentary about Nick Dacos and his first two years in AFL, but I felt that it just wouldn't do his young career any justice if I didn't emphasize that without the team, there is no Nick. 
Without Nathan Murphy, who would constantly sacrifice himself for the betterment of the team. Without McStay willing, willing us on in the prelim final. Without Darcy Moore leading from the front. Without the older heads guiding players like Nick throughout the course of those big games in Sidey and Pendles. There simply is no such thing as Nick Dacos without those that preceded him and those that walk side by side with him. What was to follow in the second half was just the cherry on top to the last two seasons for the Pies under Fly McRae. The game goes down to the wire and much like 2018, the Pies are down late with just a couple of minutes to go. And kicks a goal! The Lions are in front! So take me there, Cameron <coughs> kicks a goal, I go a couple points up and you're yeah. in the next centre square. Yeah, so we're walking What are you back. saying at that point? So we're walking back, first thing, head check the bench, no signs up for either side. So I know there's five plus minutes to go. And then Nick turns around to me and goes, oh, do you want me to go half four? Do you want me to get Mitch in? What do you, like, what do you want me to do? And I said, are you serious? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be a part of this? Yeah. It's up to you. Do you, want to, do you want to be in or not? He goes, no, 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 I'm in, I'm in. It's Dacos. Got it to Pendlebury. Pendlebury penetrating ball inside 50. Meyer check in front. Dacos on the front centre, got away handball. Dugowie on the move, turns around, he's set it and he's got it. Dugowie's kicked the goal and put Collingwood back in front. Steel side bottom. Wow! This moment was enough to see Collingwood become the 2023 Premiers and all the heartache, heartbreak, anxiety that Collingwood as a whole had to endure leading up to this moment was finally worth it. How sweet it is! Collingwood win the grand final! Pies win, Bobby, Norm Smith, Nick Dacos, a game high 29 disposals and one goal, and it was alongside his best friend and brother, Josh Dacos a superstar within his own right. Flag Pies 2023, and hopefully just a few more to come in the very near future. To the Dacos family, thank you, just thank you. Words cannot express the gratitude for what your family has brought to us as true lovers of the Collingwood Football Club. Till 2024 and beyond, I love Pies footy, signing off, goodbye.